Well, I, of course, was completely thrilled to bits when EMI came up with the idea of making a Schoenberg disc. These were not programs which were designed to be part of a recording. We were doing a big tour around the States and I wanted to combine Schoenberg with Brahms. The piece has a trajectory that it gets actually more and more wild. For about two and a half movements, you're in absolute Brahms territory, and in some in the second movement, also Mendelssohnian Brahms territory. I mean, some of the lightest, most fantastical music he was ever to write. In Schoenberg's orchestration, it's very interesting. He uses really a full modern orchestra, uh, but he keeps in relatively good behavior until about halfway through the third movement when more and more percussion starts to come in. And by the last movement, uh, with the Hungarian stuff, tambourines and xylophones and flutter tonguing and glissandos, it's I mean, completely outrageous. <laughs> Also, it just simply sends audiences berserk, the last movement. They can't believe what they've heard. As long as you can, as, as long as you don't feel, oh, you shouldn't do that. And, but actually, the last movement of the piano quartet in its original form sends audiences crazy because it's a kind of unbuttoned Brahms. He, was, he didn't really do that. <laughs> People were trying to get him to write film music, and somehow it never, it never worked. So he wrote a piece of film music for an imaginary film. This would have been a silent film, and it would have been directed by Fritz Lang, and it would have had Peter Lorre. Uh, and everybody would have worn dark hats. It would have been in dark shadows, of course, colour out of the... We're deep into film noir territory. And, of course, we're deep also into American film noir territory. And he wrote it even with a, one, a, a cinema orchestra in mind, so it's for a, a rather small orchestra. Would have had to have been a very special cinema orchestra to play it because it's really, it's really tough. <laughs> but when he comes to orchestrate his Kammer Symphony, which was originally written for 15 instruments uh, in the 1909, when he comes to orchestrate it for full orchestra in the 30s, in this piece, which is already teeming with counterpoint, I, I like, he just adds more because it's fun and he loves to do it. He, he was, I mean, one of the most naturally gifted musicians that there has ever been.
It, you only have to look at what he was writing in his 20s, you have to look at what the guru leader is to realize that he was, the guru leader is him saying, I can do everything that Brahms, Schumann, Wagner and Mahler have done. I can do it better and I can do it all at once. I can do it with a much bigger orchestra. He can do it. He'd never written for an orchestra before he wrote the Guru Lieder. And the orchestration is still, for every composer, like a textbook of what you should do. He was an astonishing genius. <laughs>